Thank you for choosing this resource by Creflo and Taffy Dollar. Our goal is to provide an understanding of God's grace and empower change. Now listen to the gospel taught with simplicity and understanding and watch it change your life. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, I want to start reading at verse 16 through 18. And I want to read out of the King James and the New Living Translation. And tonight I want to teach uh, just in line with what we've been talking about. We've been talking about overcoming uh, negative emotions. And I want to talk about overcoming negative emotions with Thanksgiving. And I want to show you how powerful Thanksgiving can be in overcoming those negative emotions that you are going to be challenged with. I believe with all of my heart that this, uh, this upcoming year, you're going to see an increase in the manifestations of the supernatural. In fact, I think gates are about to open. Y'all don't hear what I said. I think gates are about to get. The Bible says, be careful when you entertain strangers because you could be entertaining angels and doing it unaware. I think that this year is going to be a year where no man will get credit for what God is about to do. You're going to see people you've been wanting to get saved, get saved. You're going to see people transform, and it wouldn't be because of this or that. They'll say, I don't know what's happening, but something's happening on the inside of me. You're going to see how great God is. And every, one, every person that thought they loved somebody more than God, God is going to show you that your love could never match the love that he has because there's going to be a switcheroo to get ready to take place. There's going to be an increase of the supernatural. Glory be to God. An increase, you watch what I tell you. Now, that's in both negative and positive. There's going to be an increase of the supernatural where demonic activity is concerned. But when sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And the people who understand how to control their negative emotions, it's going to be really hard for Satan to deal with you because you are now taking authority over the area that he has used against mankind I mean, ever since Adam and Eve fell in the garden. And when they fell in the garden, the curse that they experienced was the curse of being emotionally ruled. So the series that we were on, I, I'd, I'd say to Taffy and, and my friends, listen, I never thought I would be this long on a series. But it's like I can't think of anything, even in Thanksgiving, where it's not dealing with your emotions. So I want you to read this out loud uh, with me, and uh, let's begin in uh, verse 16 and read through verse 18, and then uh, read the New Living Translation, and then I'll tell you what we're gonna, how we're going to deal with this. Uh, verse 16, he says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to focus in, of course, he says, Rejoice and pray and give thanks. Rejoice pray and give thanks. Now, why, why would this advice come in everything? So no matter what you're in, in good times, in bad times, when you're up, when you're down, he said this is the prescription for life. In everything, give thanks. Why would he make this? And so you see this colon here, and he says, for you giving thanks in everything is the will of God concerning you. You giving thanks in hard time is the will of God. You giving thanks in good time is the will of God. You giving thanks in the middle of uh, tragic times, it's the will of God. Now, don't misunderstand this. He's not saying give thanks to God for bad things that happen. See, we, it's easy for us to give thanks to God for good things that happen. But now he says in everything, whether it is in a good thing or in a bad thing, the will of God is give thanks in everything that is the will of God concerning you. Now, how many of you know God is the most purposeful being around? And if he tells you to give thanks in everything, there is an absolute purpose for doing that. There is a reason for doing that. Now, I said to you before that circumstances, some of those circumstances, Satan uses it to stir up negative emotions to try to move you from the will of God for your life. Now, let's look at verse 18 in the New Living Translation. In everything, 
give thanks in everything, not for everything, but in everything give thanks. Now look what he says here. He says in uh, the, uh, verse 18, he says, be thankful in all circumstances. That's pretty clear in it. Not some circumstances, not in just the happy circumstances, but give thanks in all circumstances. Why? This is God's will for you who belongs to Christ Jesus. Now, you know, you just cannot ignore that. In every circumstance, I mean, think about it. David needed a pair of shoes. He says, in that, Father, I thank you that there's provision to make that happen. Oh, my God, just had a tragic situation. Find something to give God thanks for in it. Tragic situation happened. Father, I give you thanks that all will be well. You had a car wreck. Father, I give you thanks that, you know, I, I survived it. I did not die. And then you, he said, this is the will of God in everything you find something to thank God in it, in it. You might be in a corner somewhere depressed out of your mind. Emotionally, you're stressed out. In the middle of that, he said, give God thanks in it. Now, I'm not going to, to, to ignore that. There's something he knows about life since he created it that he said in everything, Give thanks. And as Christian people, we cannot ignore that advice because he is trying to show us something, and I believe he's trying to get us out of some things. So here's what I want to show you tonight. One of the major ways to deal with negative emotions is through and with the power of thanksgiving and gratitude. One of the major ways to deal with negative emotions, depression, loneliness, rejection, one of the major ways to deal with it, feeling thrown away, not feeling accepted. I mean, it, is, it will take a devil and put him in a hold that he can't escape from. One of the major ways to do it. Now, you, you're not going to feel like doing it. You may not want to do it. That, but there is an authority that God has put on giving thanks to him, especially when it goes against and contradicts how you feel. If you want to absolutely get victory over negative emotions, if you will begin to employ thanksgiving and gratitude, a gracious, grateful heart and attitude, if you begin to do this, you will overcome those negative emotions. In everything, give thanks. Well, look at Philippians chapter 4. Uh, verses 6 through 7. What about when you're worrying? I'm not saying that you won't get worried. I'm not saying that you won't feel lonely. I'm not saying that you won't feel depressed. But I am saying to you, if you can't think of a scripture, or if you can't remember none of the stuff I've talked about in this series, find something to give God thanks in the middle of the thing. Learn how to do that. In verse 6, he says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7, he says, and the peace of God, and the peace of God, which passes your understanding, it'll keep your heart and your mind. Peace will keep your mind. You start being thankful, peace will keep your mind. You start being thankful, peace will keep your mind. I dare you to try it in the middle of a crazy situation where you feel like you're about to lose your mind, and you say, Lord, I thank you that you got me right now. He said, peace will keep your mind, and, and it'll do it through Christ Jesus. Now, uh, look at this uh, through the, look, let's, let's get New Living Translation on this here too, because when he talks about be careful for, for nothing, he's talking about don't worry, don't be anxious. You will have a ample opportunity to be worried about a lot of stuff, the New Living Translation says, don't worry about anything. Are you kidding me? People worry about everything. Now, if you tell me not to worry about anything, there must be something you're providing for me so that I can, can, can at least overcome worry when it comes up because worry seems to appear a lot. And he says, don't worry about anything. Now, here's, he's giving you a choice here. Instead of worrying, Pray about everything. Instead of worrying about anything, pray about everything. Oh, my God. 
instead of worry, so worry comes, the next thing you need to ask yourself, have I talked to God about this? Instead of worrying about anything, pray about everything, tell God what you need. All right, so you can sit there and you can worry about what you don't have, and you hadn't even thought about this. Have you talked to God about it? What are you worrying about? Take this to God, tell him what you need, all right, and then thank him for all he has done. In other words, you're worrying about, I ain't got enough money to pay this bill. I ain't got enough money to do that. He says, have you taken it to God? No. Well, take it to God. Lord, I thank you, and I need provisions to take care of this. I need provisions to take care of that. And then what do you do every time the worry comes up? Lord, I thank you that you heard me, and I have provisions to take care of that. See, that keeps you out of worry, and it keeps you into peace. It keeps you out of worry, and it keeps you into peace. You know, tomorrow, if you're not careful, you can open the door to all types of emotional feelings, feelings of loneliness, feelings of rejection, feelings of not being accepted. Maybe things you think about every year during this time where those thoughts will begin to weigh you down and depression will knock on the door. You can do that. Or you can go take it to God and spend the day thanking him for stuff you hadn't even seen yet. But if you want to stay in peace and let the God of peace and love show up, you're going to have to employ these things. These just can't be little nice, sweet little Christmas card, uh, Thanksgiving uh, 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 little sayings that you just read. You have to employ them. You have to employ them. What I'm preaching to you right now, it can't be, oh, wow, that was an inspirational message. No, I am not trying to be inspirational. I'm trying to be instructional. I'm trying to give you something that's going to work tomorrow. All right? Something that's going to work tomorrow when somebody you was expecting to show up didn't show up, and tomorrow you, 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 you forget all that. Get up in the morning, make an egg sandwich. Praise God and be thankful for this egg sandwich. <laughs> Are you listening to me? All right, let's go a little deeper in this now. Let me, let me give you three ways to practice, since we're talking about instructional. Let's give me, let me give you three ways to practice an attitude of thankfulness in everyday life. Three ways to practice an attitude of thankfulness in everyday life. You can practice these tomorrow if you need to. Number one, here's what you can practice. Thank and praise God for everything in your life. You can, you can wake up and thank and praise God for everything in your life. You may not have all that you want in your life, but you need to look around, have a flashback, and thank and praise God for everything that you have. This is a part of setting your thermostat. You can get up in the morning like, Lord, I thank you. You can start off in the morning, in the bed before you get up. Lord, I thank you I had a good night's sleep last night. Thank you, Lord. I ain't got to go to work this morning. Isha <laughs> Shaka. You, you, you can start off as a thermostat setting your day with thanksgiving. Thank you, I got a roof over my head, Lord. Thank you, Lord, like they do in the Baptist church. I woke up in my right mind. Huh? Still have the use of my limbs. Got my eyes, hallelujah. Brain still functioning, and I can remember how old I am. See, you will preach to yourself, and before you know it, you're happy, praise God. Thank you, Lord, I might not have filet mignon in the, in, in, in the refrigerator, but I got ground beef. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got to make a decision to practically thank and praise God for everything in your life. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. To thank and praise God for everything that you have in your life. These are practical things where you can do this. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, with the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to him. So we're not talking about you, you know, thinking of the thanksgiving. He's talking about opening your mouth. Open your mouth. Whether you're around somebody or not, open your mouth. Walk around your house. Thank you, Lord, I got, I got chairs. Thank you, Jesus, I got light bulbs. Walk outside. Lord, look at what you do. Thank you, Lord. You give him thanks with your mouth. 
and watch your mouth thanksgiving eradicate those negative emotions that try to run your day. You open your mouth. Or turn your name and say, open your mouth. Open your mouth. And give God thanks. And give God thanks. Amen. So here's the second way you can practice an attitude of thankfulness in, in your everyday life. Don't allow yourself to complain about anything. <laughs> Don't allow yourself to complain about anything. Wake up tomorrow and, and, and set yourself. How do you do that? The first thing you say to yourself tomorrow is, or tonight, or right now, watch your mouth. Turn your name and say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. That'll get you in trouble always. Watch your mouth. Sometimes they get ready to say it. I say, don't say it. Don't say it. I say, you know what I'm going to say. I got an idea. Don't say it. <laughs> you can practice Thanksgiving by watching your mouth and don't complain about anything. Don't complain about, I'm challenging you right now. Don't complain about anything. I don't care what you have planned for tomorrow or don't have planned for tomorrow. Don't complain about anything. Well, y'all just don't understand. See, y'all might, might be able to afford a turkey, but I can't afford nothing but bologna. Don't complain. Get you some butter, fry that bologna up. <laughs> you know, it could, it could be good now. You know, I remember them days, if you do it right, the bologna will be good. It'll bless you. Get that bologna, get you some light bread, some mustard, stick some tomatoes on top of that thing, shut your mouth now. Get some Pringles tater chip to go with that thing. The bologna can bless you now. You just got to know how to work it. Don't complain about anything. Don't complain about it. Some of y'all, somebody got a taste for some bologna right now. Praise the Lord. Y'all remember that bologna, you put it in that pan and then the heat and that thing go up at the top like, y'all already know, right? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever had a, 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 a cheese, you know, you used to melt the sheet cheese? In, anybody ever got government cheese? Don't raise your hand, I'm not trying to invite you. Okay. <laughs> in the big old brown box, the plastic around it, and, and you gotta lean your weight in on it. <laughs> and then it break up in little pieces of cheese. Now, in our household, you, you know, we ain't throwing away the crumbs. We take them crumbs and put it on top of that bread because we know it's going to melt. But what happened when the gas wasn't paid for? The electric, electricity was on, but the gas was off. Boy, you take that wax paper, put it on the ironing bowl, turn that iron on. Come on, somebody. That's broke, ain't it? Put that iron on, see that cheese start melting. <laughs> You got to figure out how to give God thanks in everything. How many of you ever had hamburger helper without the hamburger? Huh? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the bread. Sugar water without the Kool-Aid. Breakfast for dinner. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody right now. <laughs> Didn't have pancakes, but you had cornbread mix. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Don't compare yourself with others. This is practically how to have an attitude of thankfulness don't compare yourself with others. Don't wish that your life was different. Don't wish that your life, don't, don't even do that. You don't even know the plans that God has for you. Here's the word said, God says, the plans I have for you are good. They're good. So don't you, don't you deny or won't, don't, you gotta be careful. I wanna be different. I wish I wasn't me. Don't say that. Because God's plans for you are good. There's something about you that ain't like nobody else. And once you discover the plan of God for your life, yeah. you're going to be glad about it. Do not compare yourself. You can't have a, an attitude of gratitude when you're constantly comparing yourself 
with somebody else. Don't compare your, it, it's amazing. The very person you're trying to compare yourself with, somebody want to be like you and you want to be like them, it's amazing. You think that don't nobody want to be like you. Just quit the comparison. Stop the comparison. Well, they got a, <laughs> they got a big, big turkey. My turkey looked like a Cornish hen. <laughs> Just tell yourself, my turkey is organic. <laughs> now, I believe that these three points can put you to a place of contentment. Let me, let me look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 6. 1 Timothy 6 and 6. And, and, and I'm, 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 I'm trying to give you a Baptist sermon tonight, giving you the points, and then get on out of here. Because in the holiday season, folks don't need no long lesson. Tell me what you got to say, let's go. You know, I got, I got my, my hand in the oven. Hold up now. Now look, look at this, 1 Timothy 6 and 6. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. What does it mean to be content? It's a mind that's at ease. The ease of mind. Contentment, this place of satisfaction. Contentment, an ease of mind. You know, negative emotions won't let you have an ease of mind. In fact, negative emotions are there to, to destroy the ease of mind. Now, listen to me carefully. Now, in reading this, I'm thinking, all right, well, first of all, who wrote this? The Apostle Paul wrote this. Who did he write it to? It was a letter to Timothy. And I said, oh, my God, I didn't see that. The guy who wrote, Be Content, was in jail when he wrote it. He was in prison when he wrote it. Now, I didn't really get a hold of this until I actually visited the prison that Paul was in. I went to the prison that he was in. And we walked in the, it was, what, downstairs, Taffy, in, in, in a hole, really. And they would feed him and everything from a hole at the top. The ground, Paul's ground, was cold and eerie, and when the lights are off, it's pitch black. The guy who said, be content, be ease, have an ease of mind, was in a dark prison waiting to be uh, killed. I mean, they had his name up there, date when he was going to get killed. And he wrote, godliness with contentment is great gain. Here's a man who should not have had an ease of mind saying, be content. Now, you may not be in line waiting execution, but he says, even in line awaiting execution, be content. And you upset because you got two eggs instead of four. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Be content. And he says, godliness with contentment how many of you want to see great gain in 2019? Yeah. Amen. Equals great gain. There's something about living a life of contentment, even in the midst of hard times, that will make the difference in your life, an ease of mind. So I want to close this by showing you this. There's some benefits. There are some actual, tested, proven benefits that come from being thankful and having a a, 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 a gracious attitude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 12 of them and then close with three scriptures and, and we're out. Number one, benefits of thank, thankfulness. It reduces depression. When you live this thankful life that I'm talking about, it will reduce depression. Number two, a thankful life will get your promotion at work. What? Don't nobody want to promote somebody that complained and, and got a problem all the time? A thankful life will get you promotion at work. An ungrateful, well, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> number three, number three, a thankfulness, thankfulness will improve our self-esteem. 
you practicing living a thankful life will improve your, it's been proven, it will improve your self-esteem. Number four, thankfulness will increase our energy. I tell you what, when you start walking around and living a thankful life, man, you, you, you'll, you'll improve your energy. Number five, you know, being thankful will help you to develop a strong immunity system. Being thankful will help you. That attitude, that diseasement, being thankful will help you to develop strong immunity. Been proven. Number six, being thankful will decrease blood pressure. I'm on blood pressure medicine. I, I think you just need to be a little bit more thankful. Number seven, being thankful will increase sleep quality. Being thankful will increase sleep, sleep quality. I was amazed at some of these studies that they have done where Thanksgiving is concerned. Number eight, being thankful will, will reduce and cope with negative stress. Being thankful. You can go around and meditate on the bad emotions and be stressed out over it. Being thankful will reduce that stress. Number nine, being thankful will reduce negative emotions such as envy, anger, and hatred. Just being thankful. Envy, anger, hatred. Being thankful. I don't know who you, I don't know who you got coming over your house tomorrow. You might have somebody coming over your house you don't like. And there's some kin to you. <laughs> Start the night being thankful. And you can greet them with a holy hug tomorrow. <laughs> Watch this. Being thankful will help you to become more likable. People like thankful folks. Being thankful will make you become more likable. Number 11, being thankful will increase feelings of happiness and well-being. Just being thankful. The feelings will be something that will be under, those negative feelings will be under attack by being thankful. And then number 12, being thankful will increase productivity in your life. Being thankful will increase productivity in your life. Isn't that amazing? See, God is saying, his will for our lives is to practice thanksgiving. Look at all of the benefits that come, physical, social, relationships. Look at all the benefits that come just by being thankful. Let me close with these three scriptures. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. We, we are familiar with the first part of the scripture, Colossians 3, 15. I don't think we read the last part of the scripture. I want you to pay attention to it. He says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Well, what do I need to do so the peace of God can rule in my heart? I want peace rule in my heart. I want peace rule in my heart, not stress. I want peace rule in my heart, not depression. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body. And he said, how am I going to do this? He says, and be thankful. Be thankful. I got my answer. You want peace ruling in your heart? Be thankful. You want to give way to peace and wholeness and security in the midst of turmoil? Be thankful. Praise God. The, the benefits that come when a Christian makes his mind up that I am going to practice Thanksgiving. This is not going to be a seasonal thing. It's not going to be just on the holiday of Thanksgiving. This is a part of my life as a Christian. Look what he says in Psalms 104, and then Psalms 106 and 1, and we'll close. Psalms 104, and just the encouragement that I get from Psalms 104 is in something that I want to encourage you with. He says, bless the Lord. Now, here he is talking to his soul. That's where his emotions are. Now, you may have to talk to your soul. You may have to talk to your soul. I, I, I went to a, a movie last night, Taff and I, to see a premiere uh, the, the something, uh, the, the little boxing thing. 
and 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 I was wondering why hadn't I gone to this movie theater in, in in a long time, and I'm just trying to figure out there's some reason why I hadn't gone to this movie theater, but I couldn't figure out why I hadn't gone to the movie theater until I got there and remember, you know, your cousins came to the movie theater last night <laughs> and talked through the whole thing. You, you ever been to that? Talk through the whole thing. I want to give a play-by-play -play commentary on the whole thing. Then sister girl come on the right side with her phone. Hey, girl, how you doing? Oh, I'm just here doing that. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm just thinking the whole thing. You would think, well, a little courtesy that just kind of says that people can't hear because I'm talking. No. They just kept on talking. Through the whole, you understand what I'm saying? Through the whole thing. And then I sat down, and then this big old head just right in the middle and you know, if you lean back, the head will disappear. No, they want to sit up the whole time. <laughs> and I said, now I remember why I don't come to this theater. Because Pookie and Queen and them come at nighttime, and I need to go somewhere else. <laughs> the whole, whole movie. Well, you know what I'm talking about now. No, you're going to jump like that. No, they're probably going to do it right here. Hello. No, you ain't here right now. Oh, my God, dog. No. All y'all cousins came last night. So I had to talk to my soul. I had to talk to my soul because a long time ago, you could say, shh. But do that today. Shh. Who you shushing? Who you shushing? You don't shush me. So sometimes you have to talk to your soul. <laughs> and then she finally leaned back. I said, look at the Lord. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? But I ain't going there no more. I ain't never going there no more. I ain't telling y'all where it is. They might sue me. I ain't never going there no more. But you got to talk to your soul sometime. And in the midst of being tempted to complain, and in the midst of being tempted not to be thankful, and in the midst of comparing what you have and what God's done for you and to you to with somebody else, you got to talk to your soul. And here's what he said. He said, bless the Lord. And he says, I'm talking to you, soul. I know you don't feel like it, but we're going to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Bless the Lord. And look at this one, Psalms 106. Man, it's praise God. Psalms 106. He says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's talking to a soul. Bless ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? He good. He good. That's all you need to know. He good. I said, he's good. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father which is above. If you have ever experienced any goodness in your life, it came from God. It came from God. He says, so praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good for his mercy. Somebody said, what do you mean he's good? Boy, you need to check his mercy out. It's all the stuff that should have happened to you that didn't happen to you. Oh, he's good. It's the bad you deserved, but you didn't get. Oh, he's good. Oh, when you should have died, but you didn't die. Oh, ain't he good. Oh, when you should have, this shouldn't have happened, or that shouldn't have happened, or you shouldn't have got that opportunity again. But then he let it happen again. He is good. And I mean you need to remind yourself to give thanks unto God because he is good. And every, it ain't nobody in here that has not tasted of the goodness of the Lord. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I'm telling you, he is good. So he didn't have to do nothing extra for you in order to show his goodness. He's been showing his goodness ever since you've been here. You woke up this morning, he's a good God. 
You get asleep tonight, he's a good God. He healed you, whether you took medicine, had an operation, I don't know how you got it, but he healed you, he's a good God. You need to start praising and thanking God for his goodness. You need to start praising and thanking God for his mercy. You need to start praising and thanking God because you know you didn't deserve it. You know you didn't deserve it, but the goodness of the Lord kept showing up anyway. So if he's ever been good to anybody in this place, you need to tell him, thank you, Lord, because you're good. Thank you, Lord, because you're good. Don't have the job I want right now, but I got something you're good. Ain't got a job right now, but my water's still on. My, my, my heat's still working. Still got a roof over my head. You're good. Well, I, I don't really think it was the Lord. I really think it was my efforts. Oh, I almost said something. But yeah, it ain't your efforts. It's his goodness. What does Scripture say? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And let me tell you something. His goodness is about to multiply. Why? Why, you say, why, you ask, is his goodness going to multiply? Because the Bible says his goodness will cause a man to repent. Yeah. His goodness will cause a person to change his mind. It's when you know you ain't no good that God still showed you some good. And you're sitting there by yourself knowing you don't deserve another chance. And he gave you another chance. And then he's done all this for you and you can't figure out how to Thank him. Because you sitting in church, I don't want nobody to see me thanking the Lord. Negro, please. You better thank him while you can. You better thank him while you got an opportunity. You, gotta, you better thank him while you yet alive and here on this earth. You better figure out how to thank him because God's not finished yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. He's about to do his masterpiece on your life. He's about to do something so magnificent, so awesome. He's about to lift you up out of a ditch, plant your feet on a solid ground, put a new song in your heart. He's about to open doors that no man could open a door for. He's about to show out in these last days. And while everybody else is afraid of what is coming, let me tell you what's coming. He's about to cause the greatest revival that the planet Earth has ever seen. He's about to cause increase. He's about to cause healing. He's about to cause favor. He's about to put you in places that used to be a dream, but it's no longer a dream. It's going to be a reality in your life. Watch and see what the Lord is getting ready to do. Come on, praise him, somebody. I got to praise him. I got to praise him. I got to praise him because he's good. I got to praise him because of his mercy. I got to praise him. My God. He's good. He's good. Somebody said, I hadn't seen it yet. Keep your eyes open. He's good. And he's not finished yet. And for those who will believe him, and for those who won't leave him, and for those who will stick with him, he will bring you out. He will bring you up. And it's God that determines promotion. Promotion, the Bible says what? Coming from the Lord. So get ready. There's an invasion of the supernatural. Getting ready to hit your life. And that which used to be impossible, when God put his hands on it, will become possible. And he'll give you favor with man. He'll give you favor with your enemies. People that don't even like you gonna show you goodness. Oh, y'all better get that, man. You better get that. 
You better take that. People that don't like you are going to show you some goodness. Amen. Amen. And even while you're here tonight, I just got to believe that your Thanksgiving tonight is causing the God of the turnaround to show up in your life. What is it that he could be turning around right now? Is it a relationship that he might be turning around right now? Is it a financial problem he might be turning around right now? Is it sickness and disease he might be turning around right now? I don't know, but if I were you, I'd go ahead and praise him anyhow. I'd go ahead and thank him anyhow. I'd go ahead and magnify him anyhow. My God. Ah, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.